Hi, everyone. Pastor Galen, lead pastor at Shine Hills Church. Thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. We hope that these podcasts will be a real encouragement to you on your spiritual journey. You can also connect with Shine Hills at shinehills.org. Hope you enjoy the program. We are across the street and around the world. Shine well, hello again, everybody, and we're back. We decided we decide just to continue on. We're not going to continue on I with the this. same uh, topic necessarily, but we've got to continue on and try to try to maximize because because you got to go see Oz Guinness, <laughs> and and uh, so I, I'll tell him you said hello. Yeah, I want you to do that. All right, make sure I'm sure. I'm sure that'll warm his heart knowing that there's a pastor in Wyoming that says hi. Yeah, right. I'm sure it will. So here's my question to you. I want to pose. This is kind of raw or just okay. kind of off the cuff. Let's say, um, I can I heard a pastor say one time it was actually at a Promise Keepers meeting. But Ooh. do you remember Promise Keepers? Did so you ever... it was a little bit before my time. Really? Uh, but I did right at the tail end of that. There was a actually a pretty good sized group that met in Dubois, Wyoming, oh, still darn. calling themselves that. And I preached there. Oh, did you really? I did a couple awesome. times. It was great. Well, we were, I was, uh, it had to be in the 90s. We went to Atlanta and it was just a pastor's mm. conference. And I went with Dick Young. He's the founding pastor of Shine Hills Church. And I was associate at that time. And so it'd probably be 95, somewhere in there. And we went to this conference and there's a African American pastor, just phenomenal. He just lit the place up. And I, I can't remember his name, but he said this and I'll never forget it. He says, God will bruise you before he will use you. Oh, that's well put. <laughs> it's good. And, and I just Oh, thought, that's going to take a little while to unpack. <laughs> so that's good. we're we're actually launching into a series, and it's called Broken Together. Good, yes. And uh, this whole idea of brokenness and uh, the shattered pieces, and we're all broken. We're all a part of the fall. Mm-hmm. And I think that one thing, there's a couple, there's a lot of things we can talk about here, but one of the things that people, I don't think, fully understand is that the damage of the fall. I don't think right. we really preach enough about that. I think, you know, you, you talk about, you know, people that say, I think one of the, the, to jump right into it, I think one of the, the arguments that has been lost in the church is that, uh, that you're born gay or you're born straight or whatever, you're born that way, right? Mm-hmm. That's a, used to be, there was nature or just the way you grew up or whatever, but right. now it's like, nope, I'm born that way. And it, it's just like, that's accepted as fact. Well, it's even a that ideology, it, you, there are people that accept it as fact, but even now it's in conflict with the new theory that it's all fluid. Oh, and so well, that's interesting. Yeah, you can't have it both ways. That's but, true. But you're that's right. That's a great point. I, I'm glad you brought that up. So, but this whole idea, I feel like we've lost that argument because it's like, well, that's not what scripture says. But here's why I think people can feel they're born, you know, anyway, you know. If you're biologically male and you identify as female, because we are all broken, and right. the, the effect of the fall right. is so great, um, I don't think we fully understand, and I, I don't think we fully understand what salvation means and having Christ put us back together. Right. And so I, uh, so my question off the cuff: is there was there a did you ever have a brokenness time that you uh-huh. want to talk about? Yes, sir. So it's happened several times in my life. Yeah, That's the reason me, why it's well, so me difficult. Too. Yeah. <laughs> but in some of them were very, very extraordinary, very difficult for me. Um, one of them, when I, I, I tell you what, all through high school, if you would have seen me, I look like a nerd. <laughs> I, uh, I wore. A, did you have Did you have the glasses nope. taped and everything? I, no, no, no. Oh, not that. It was a different kind of nerd. <laughs> okay. I kept a really close military <laughs> high and tight haircut. Okay. I had a watch from the Marine Corps with its logo in the middle. Nice. I would. Dre- I dressed every day like I was going to the military because that's oh. my dream. Okay. That's what I wanted to do. I'd read every. And, and this is honest. Um, I read every edition to that point of Military History magazine, and and I just w- had immersed myself in military history. I wow. was looking forward to going, and partly it was running away from the fact that I knew at the age of fourteen, God was calling me to serve Him with my life in wow. some way in the church. Wow! And so I was running away from that, wanting to go into the military so bad. Wow! And uh, God, I listened to a. Um, a lawyer preach of all things, a lawyer in, in Colorado Springs from John 12, 24. He's mm-hmm. verily I say unto you, except a kernel of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. And God crushed me, mm-hmm. broke me. I was 17. And I thought, I, I, I'm going to, okay, I only met God halfway. 
I said, all right, I'll give you one year of this Bible college nonsense that everybody wants me to do. Okay. And I'm going to the Marine Corps. I'm done. And, and God got me there in one night during the Lord's table in Santa Clara, California, where I was running from God. I was at the back of the auditorium and I listened to a man preach about David and how God had to use so many di different things in David's life after mm. David had sinned to bring him to himself. Mm. And I thought, all right, Lord, I, 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 I hate what I've been doing. You gave your whole life for me mm. and I'm holding back. You, you died for me and I'm holding my life from you. Right. I can't do that. I went back to my dorm and I wept. And again, I was broken. Mm. And I'll tell you one that was very hard was when I ran for Wyoming state auditor mm. and uh, did well but didn't quite win. Mm. And God used that in an amazing way. It hurts because we put everything we had into it and right. just worked hard. Right. And, and God and believe you're doing what God asked you yes. to do. Right. Yeah. yeah. And God had called us to that. And then we lost. And then I, all right, Lord, what is it you want me to do? That, by the way, is where I read Oz Guinness's book. Oh, That's wow. why he's so pivotal. Yeah. Um, I I wondered if the Lord was calling me directly back into the pulpit mm. or whether he was calling me. Uh, into that intersection between faith and public policy. And uh, sure enough, God used a number of things to confirm that. But mm. I've been broken multiple times. I'm yeah. sorry to take so much time. No, that's... No, that's I, uh, I know the thing, that's happened to you too. Oh, man. Yeah, and it is multiple. I, I hope he's bruised all the stuff he needs to break out of me. That's what I hope. <laughs> no. Because like, brokenness is not is not fun. It's... it's it's hum, it's humbling. Right. And, I, you know, I always say hum, humility is a garment that looks good on everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, Oh, that's well said. But I, it, but it's not easy. You right. know, you think, you say, oh, yeah, I'm humble. I'm like, no, you're not, <laughs> if, you, if you think that. Yeah. It's when you know you've been so humbled and it's just like the garment is placed on you yes. almost. Now, you don't go put it on. Right. That's That, that would be a false humility, yeah. so to speak. But, but when you know that yeah. you've been, you know, it's just almost like God's, yeah. draped you with this and it's like okay now i can use you have you ever been here galen so after a few times of that what i do know is that being immersed in christ at a place where you're at the end of yourself mm -hmm. and where you can clearly see god carrying you in a beautiful way i hate the breaking process but there have been a couple times recently where I've walked through something where I don't have any answers and I'm just waiting for God to do something yeah. where I'm thinking, I love where I am. I just wish I could do this, both these things and hold them together where I love where I am spiritually with Christ, but I also want the answer to this prayer yeah. right now at the same time. Because I know that after the answer to the prayer, often my heart is, I, I get so busy in all these other things now that I lose something, yeah. you know? No, and I think, but you know, you lose something. I don't know if this is where you were going, but for me, I, I, every time was a loss. Every yeah. time, every brokenness was, uh, felt like a loss. Mm. And that's probably why it's, it, it feels like brokenness. But, um, but when you realize that God has used and redeems, I minister out of my brokenness. Amen. Yes. I mean, I'm, I am not what I would, you would call a great counselor, but I'm a great counselor for people that are broken. Yeah. It's like, I can relate to that. I know how that feels. I know yeah. exactly where you're at. And so it's, yeah. it's not that I have this great skill in counseling. It's just right. that, yeah, unfortunately I've been hit by that truck yeah. and I, here's, here's how God dealt with me. God I works think he this might, over. You know, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. um, and it seems like every time a brokenness for me, it's probably of, of pride or self-confidence or even a God confidence, you know, in planting that church in Colorado, you know, and then and then there was a whole bunch of brokenness that happened as a result of that. Mm -hmm. To the point, it's like, you know, it was almost like a curse God and die moment. And it's like, no, I'm just gonna I'm gonna ride this out. I'm gonna trust God for whatever reason. I think He's done with me. He must be ticked with me. He must not like me or whatever. I mean, all all my prayers would go down to that in that trough of maybe you call it self pity, but it's like my reality was right there in front of me. Mm -hmm. um, failure was was everywhere. Yeah. And then, and I actually had this prayer. It's like, God, I feel like I'm at the, in this box Canyon. And the only way out is for you to reach down this box Canyon, put me someplace. Yeah. And, and good I'll just, analogy. And yeah. I will tell you, God did that. Mm. It's the most amazing thing. It'd take a long time to tell it, but, but it's like, wow, I, 
and when you are a recipient of a box Canyon type of, you know, yes. uh, Swindoll calls it a turtle on the fence post, you know, yes. the only way you got there is because God, someone else put you there. That's wonderful. You didn't crawl at the top. Yeah. And, and so, but when you, when you do that, then you know, whatever next things happen next or wherever you're at, it's like, well, God did that. Right. And, um, uh, I didn't do it with ambition. I didn't do it with skill. I didn't do it with my talent. Didn't do any manipulation. Nothing. This was a God thing. Right. There's a lot of freedom that comes with and confidence. Right. And it's like, well, okay. So God, if uh, if you're done with me, I think you're going to be done. If you're going to keep using me, I know you'll use me. And it, I don't have to. I don't have to deal with that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I used to all the time. Mm -hmm. I just live there. And but break, brokenness has that beauty. Yeah. Um, I want to tell you. So one of the things we're gonna. Uh, have you ever heard this kintsugi? I'm probably saying it wrong. Kintsugi is like these broken vessels. No, that's new to me. Broken vessels that are put together with this. Oh yes. With gold mortar, if you will, and put these pieces back together. It's a piece of pottery. It it's looks a pottery. Like, right? Yes, yeah. it's pottery that's been shattered. The Japanese art of repairing broken pottery. There yeah. you go. Kintsugi. It's more beautiful broken yeah, it than is. it would have been originally. Thank you. You yeah, just I love took that. it right out of my oh, mouth. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, but that's that's it. Yeah. I think I think um, we can look at my life and I can say mm -hmm. those broken things are where God broke broke us. Um, yes, those are the places of beauty and of and, and really strength too. It's glorious. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and I look at that. I and and that is a beautiful analogy yeah. to the the Christian life. Yeah. And you look backwards at all the great men of God whom He has used from the Old Testament to today. Right. And they all went with that. Of course, the Apostle Paul is a prime analogy, but right. who even spoke toward that when he asked the Lord to take away his thorn in the thresh, flesh three times. Right. And God said, no, 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 my strength is made beautiful, if in you will, weakness, right. in his weakness. But that's right. one that's been really impactful for me is Moses. Hmm. Uh, and, and you really... You can study that out through the Old Testament, but you really see it in the synopsis of his life in Hebrews chapter 11, okay. which is really beautiful. He, he points out, I, I pulled it up here, Yeah. by faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured, I love this, as seeing him who is invisible. Mm. When you look at that, though, how did he get to this place? The first 40 years of his life was lived in the Pharaoh's court yep. as, a, Pretty I'm posh. sure, a very high-ranking official. Yep. yep. And trying to pick up what he saw as a wrong, but trying to do it in his own flesh, he went out and killed a man. Yep. And God drove him from Egypt and actually drove him away from his own kinsmen because they kept saying, oh, look, he's going to kill us now. Right. And so he fled to, I mean, a distant place, Midian. Yeah. And wound up living 40 in the years. desert. Yeah. 40 years. Following Jethro's sheep around in Midian. Yep. As a shepherd, very different than Pharaoh's Probably, court. probably felt pretty forgotten. <laughs> yes. He's an outcast. Yeah. For sure. 40 years of brokenness. Right. I shouldn't complain. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. <laughs> when you look at that, um, what God did for him, though. So if God has shown up in a burning bush when, when he was 40, mm. if God had done that in Egypt, I wonder what kind of man he would have had. Uh, he never had the, right. the brokenness of the trust or the learning. Right. The, yeah, right. no, that's true. And, but God showed up to him when he was broken 40 you know, years. I tell people all the time, especially when a broken, this kind of story comes. And I said, you know what? You're in good company mm -hmm. because every, every saint that I've ever read about has a desert journey, a desert walk yeah. where things seem dry and hot and no resources and doesn't seem like God's anywhere. Right. It's this desolate, dry place. And it's like, well, that's, that desert walk is a, is a part of the journey yes. of the, of the, of the faith. Yeah. And I think, I don't know if it's a testing of our faith. It's a, it's a, certainly a tempering of our faith. Maybe it's maybe breaking some things out mm -hmm. of, uh, of us that we need to be broken. Um, but anyway, whatever that, that desert journey is, you're in good company yes. because that's, uh, all the saints of old have had uh, you know, to walk that, that I, walk. Yeah, I agree with you. Exploring that just a little bit. And I, I'm using this as an analogy. When we come to the subject of the biblical understanding of what fasting is, oh, yeah. coming to the end of our flesh 
which wars against the spirit. Of course, we, we see that in Romans chapter seven. Yeah. I wonder if that kind of is also an analogy of allowing ourselves to be broken so that God can speak into a, into our hearts, into our lives in a different way. Hmm. Over and over, God wants to speak into our hearts, but we allow the things of the flesh, the things of the earth um, to, to cloud us. Yeah. And God... Um, desires for for all of those things to grow as the old song says strangely dim so that we can look at the light of his glory and his grace that's right but we allow those things to get in the way i I love the idea of where you're going with this brokenness because it's so important and and broken together i think when we realize Mm -hmm. we're all broken i i think it binds us with believers for sure but it also binds us with the unbelievers like yeah we're broken and the only thing that you see it's beautiful that it's, if you if I look put together, it's because God did that. Amen. That's yes. the story that I hope I hope comes through. Yeah. But you you brought up something I I think it's kind of interesting this this whole idea that we I don't I don't think we can break ourselves per se. Mm-hmm. But I will tell you after being broken several times, I'm I'm very cautious. I don't want to. I don't want to lead with the Galen foot, you know, so yes. to speak. I want to lead with what God wants, and I yeah. don't want to because I know that brokenness. It's not. And I'm not saying it's, he, you know, sometimes he'll break us just because he wants to use us in another way. I'm not saying that we can avoid that, but to, to whatever degree we can, I, this humility, I think is, uh, is one way to say, okay, God, I am trusting completely in you. I, I don't want to get, push my agenda or my way or my timing. Right. And that's, those are the flesh things for me yes. that I have to. And I think he's, Amen. if I, if I look back and see what the brokenness has done, it's definitely remove the, the, the Galen push. And it's more right. of that. Um, here's an idea, here's a vision, but God, you can, if right. you say no, I'm, I'm good with that too. What, what happens for the Christian? Because we recognize there, there are people that look at the church and say it's full of hypocrites. We've all heard that. Yeah. And, and we all, we all in are. the church say, yes, that's for sure. absolutely true. But then we know more than anybody yeah. else. It's like, I'm more of a hypocrite than anybody. So right. Paul said, right, right, right. I'm the greatest sinner of all. And, and when people say that from the outside, looking inwards, we say, yes, please, why don't you, we can add one more hypocrite. Yeah, come We'd on lo- in. Please come absolutely. Right in. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, the, but the thing about that understanding for us is we know that we are not perfect. Yeah. But we're forgiven. Yeah. And so when you find other people whose lives are a mess and they're reacting out of that mess within the church, mm-hmm. we still surround them in love. For sure. Because we're all broken. Yeah. And God uses those beautiful things. And after that happens enough, pretty soon, there may be glorious opportunities that are placed in your path. And yeah. from an earthly perspective, you think, well, that looks really good. But God, what is your will for me? Because I've been down the path of brokenness before, and I just want to be in the middle of your will. Yeah. It's about something bigger than us. It's about God. It's about, the we call this the doxology, but it's about the glory of of God Hmm. and everything in our life will all be gone and forgotten. Five generations from now, they may never know our names, Hmm. but they will know of God Hmm. and everything that we can do to point everything that we are toward him. Uh, Oh, I I forget if it's mercy me, but it's a great song that says, if I tell you my story, it's the story of him. Hmm. And that ought to be our aim. That's one of my favorite songs as a result of that. That's awesome. Well, I think that's a good place to land. Broken Together, I, I think it's important, and I hope it's a great series, and uh, we'll see how, how God may use it. I hope it, I hope it g- brings an on-ramp for some people that may have been broken that mm-hmm. they don't think that their life still matters to God or to the church or whatever. I mean, there's all kinds of, you can get broken and get away from God. I hope this is an on-ramp back on with Him. Amen. So, I'm looking forward to it. So in the meantime, as you continue on your life, whether you have a brokenness or maybe you're right in the middle of it, I hope that you will be strong and very courageous. God bless you all.